Hi guys, and welcome to this video for the General Maths course on, well, it's a long title, about comparing numerical data, yada, 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 yada. Look, if you've found the video, you know what it's here. It's building on previous work. We've just done a video on box plots. This is now going to take it to the next level, talking about box plots and back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagrams. Yes, well, I call them stem and leaf diagrams. For some reason, the book was called called stem and leaf plots or just stem plots. Anyway, my name's Darren. I'm the Mass Guru. Thank you very much for joining me. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It doesn't actually give me any excitement other than the fact that I know that you are watching and it stops my mum from having to watch all these videos. She's up to about 200,000 views. Go mum! Um, and there's MathsGuru.com if you can sign up there as well. That gives you the videos, download them on note, time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more on its way. All right, so what are we doing today? Well, understand how to use back-to-back -back stem and leaf plots, or they're called stem plots, to compare distributions. And understand how to use parallel box plots. Well, parallel, mm, something's parallel, we're normally talking about two things. But interestingly, you can talk about a lot, lot more, because parallel means they're never going to meet. Which is a bit odd, really, because how would you have a box plot meeting? I mean, what are they going to crash together? Whoa, seems a bit weird. We're moving on. So in our previous video, we looked at the idea of how to draw a box plot. And if you haven't seen that video, it is actually awesome. Maybe I'm saying that myself. But we learned how to draw a box plot in terms of taking the five number summary statistics that our CAS spits out and turning it into a visual representation that also takes account of outliers. So here is my outlier, which we use by formulas and, and blah, blah, blah. So please, if you haven't got any clue what I'm talking about, you're going to need to understand the premise of what a box plot is trying to show, particularly with things like the lowest number, the highest number, or the, sort of, yeah, the minimum, the maximum, Q1, Q3, and the medium, because we're going to use those next, or median. So what is the whole point of this? Well, it's about comparing categorical and numerical data. Now, way at the beginning of this section, we looked at what categorical data was and numerical data. Obviously, numerical data, numbers, make sense, but it's numbers that we can find an average for. Yeah, so things like height and weight, stuff that can generally be measured. Now, I know that years, if we look at the idea of years 2019, 2020, 2021, seems numerical, yes? It's got numbers in it. Well, yes, but actually it's not. It's categorical data. Years are generally categorical data. Why? Because it doesn't make any sense to find the average year. Yes, numerically we could. But statistically speaking, what, did, what would it mean to say that the average year was 2019? It doesn't make actually any sense. It's not something we would use. All right? So categorical data... Very important that you be that you can understand what a categorical data is. And so, in this situation here, we know, and it's really important next year, that back-to-back -back stem and leaf plots and box plots allow us to compare categorical data and numerical data. All right, so let's give an example of what that means. Here is a back-to-back -back stem plot. Now, when it's a back-to-back -back stem plot, we again, there's a video where you should already know how to do the drawing of a stem plot. But this now has our numerical data, and our numerical data in this situation is life expectancy. So all these numbers here and here are basically standing for life expectancy. And be very, very careful to make sure that you remember how to read a stem plot. Yes, that's why they give you the key here. That means that the 5 with the line and the 8 means 58 years. Not 5.8, not 5,800, 58 years years right so there we go we've got our life expectancy so the numbers are coming off the stems but our categories are either side and so obviously a stem and leaf plot or a back-to-back -back only allows you to compare two categories with some numerical data mm, that was an exam one yeah all right, so in this situation, having got that, we can now use our stem plot to take out things like the lowest value, the highest value, the middle value, and start to compare the data on either side. And that's what they've sort of done here. They've said that, you know, for 2010, the M, capital M, what do you reckon capital M stands for? Absolutely, median. The middle value would be 76 years, with the interquartile range being 8. Now, why would the interquartile range be important to us? Absolutely, previous video. Looks at the idea of upper fences and lower fences, if that was going to be important to us. Later on, we actually quite like the interquartile range because it looks at the middle 50% of our data and it stops outliers messing with our heads. And again, that's all coming up, yeah? Whereas what we notice here is for our 1970 data, our median is 67 years and our interquartile range is 12.5 years, all right? So what? automatically I can look at these things here and go, well, hold on a moment. 
In 1970, our median was much, much lower than it was for 2010, because we've gone from 67 years to 76 years. Now think about life expectancy, the longer you're living, would we want a short value or a larger value? Well, I don't know about you, but I wanna live a little bit longer than 67 years. Yes, interquartile range means the spread of the data, 12.5 years to eight years. Now a smaller interquartile range in this situation is actually really good. So I'm looking at the data, I'm looking at these values going, oh, okay, how am I gonna use this in a, in a statistical report? And again, lo and behold, I've got the values taken out of the Cambridge um, General Mass textbook. And thanks very much, Cambridge, for letting me use your books because they are freaking awesome, right? So here, if you remember, whenever we do a statistical analysis, we are looking for sort of comparing spread and centers and maybe outliers. Now, in this situation, we don't have any outliers. There's nothing clear. And so we're just going to look at center and spread. And these are the type of things you want to put in your summary book if you're allowed one, because it allows you to scaffold later responses. So when you get a, a box plot or a back-to-back -back stem plot, you can sort of look at these, change the numbers, and know that you're going to be pretty close to a correct answer. So center. The median life expectancy in males in 2010 was nine years higher than in 1970. Now that's really important. They've given the two years. When we talk about it, we give the actual years, but in brackets, We've given the medians as well. Always, 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 when you talk about a summary statistic, put the actual summary statistic in as well, yes? Now, obviously, we could have said they were higher. They've gone a bit further by saying, well, yeah, actually, we know that it's nine years higher. But that was the important stuff. Spread, that's the interquartile range, this interquartile range. The spread of life expectancy in males, again, in 2010, mention the year, and in brackets, what it was, was different to the spread in 1970. Now again, different? Well, of course it was different. I personally would have turned around and said it is higher. Yes, because I know it's higher. 12.5 years is obviously very much higher than IQR of eight. What is their conclusion? It says, in conclusion, the median life expectancy for these in countries has increased, let's make sense, over the last 40 years. Oh, they've gone 40 years. I could have said from 1970 to 2010. And the variability in life expectancy between countries has decreased. Now, that is a key learning from here. We very rarely use the idea of IQR. When I say the IQR has decreased, we say the variability in whatever your numerical value is. Yeah? So again, put that in your sign book. If you don't understand, speak to your actual teacher. Yeah? Leave a comment below and I'll try and explain it a bit better in a later video. But variability is so, so important. Then we move on to parallel box plots. Yay, parallel box plots. We love these because we like diagrams. Yes, the back-to-back -back stem plots was lovely, but it was still just numbers. Look at that diagram. Your brain's already trying to decode that by looking at it. What do we now notice? Do we have numerical data? Tick, we have the numerical data on the bottom. Do we have categorical data up the side? Yep, male and female. We can't find an average of male and female. Doesn't make any sense. And so there we go. What do we note about these dots? Outliers, congratulations, and now we've got information there. So remember, the bottom value, this here is my minimum. This one here is my max. But in this graph here, that's my max, or sorry, that my, in my uh, box plot, and that's my min. What's this line here? That's my medium. And what's this line here? It's my median. So again, we can start reading data off this to talk about the shape, the spread, the center, outliers, ka-ching, just from this two diagram. And there are lots of marks available in reports for getting this stuff right. And really what you're doing is like an English essay just with some maths. And again, remember the difference between this line here and that line there, and this line here and that line there is the IQR. And again, we're gonna try and think of that in terms of variability. So here we go, let's see what we can come up with with a statistical report. And you'll notice here, yes, we've talked about center, spread, outliers, and a conclusion. So again, let's look at the center. That's this line here, center here, and center here. The median pulse rate for females, again, they've given it, M equals 72, and the units, is higher than for males. With it, again, given. So we've given the female, we've said male, and we've given our data item, and we've given an indication of where it's higher. Now notice here they didn't say how much higher it was. That's fine. You could put it in. Would you get extra marks? Who knows? but it's not gonna hurt. What about the spread? The spread, so that's the difference between the ends of the actual box. The spread of pulse rates for females, i.e., and they've said, 
IQR is 15, is higher than for the males at 10. Yes, and again, we could have said five higher. What about outliers? Ah, no, we didn't talk about outliers before because there weren't any, but they certainly are here. And if they're there, you must talk about them. There are no female outliers. Ka-ching. Talk about state and the obvious. But with males, the pulse rates of 40 and 120 were outliers. You are stating the facts. We didn't need to work out the fences. We didn't need to do any of that rubbish. We're just stating the facts. And so now we pull it all together. We've stated some information. Now we're going to conclude. In conclusion, the median pulse rate for females was higher than for males, and female pulse rates were generally more variable than male. Now again, more variable, what did that mean? Wider interquartile range. ka -ching. Notice how they're very similar in their wording? Put in your summary book. And there we go, that's it for this particular lesson. We've looked at comparing box plots, we've looked at comparing stem plots. Thank you very much for watching. Again, my name is Darren. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, it just lets me know you're watching. And there's massguru.com for all those downloadable notes. Spread the word, let people know that this channel is here. I just want to get everyone to understand maths. But otherwise, I will hopefully see you in another video. Take care, guys. Stay safe.